This is the best or worst podcast. And now, here are your hosts, Koji Steven Sakai and M. Martin Mapoma. All righty. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Koji. And this is Martin. And this is the best or worst pod. Uh, this is episode number four, 41. So we're really excited. 41. Hey, real quickly. How was my introduction this time? Okay. Last time you said my voice was kind of weird. Yeah, you did. You did a funny voice last time. So. I did not do a funny voice. <laughs> so there's no uh. funny voice this time. But, uh, but let's, let's get to our <laughs> guest. Uh, we were having some technical difficulties and, and time and wise and everything like that. So I just want to make sure that we're that we don't uh, spend too much time for you and I talking. Let's, let's get into it. Uh, Dynast Amir is our guest from, uh, from, I mean, I, I don't even what? remember how I've, how I've met you. Um, but I, didn't you I, go to Christian, you didn't go to Christian brothers? No, but, but we, but I, I've been following your stuff so much. I've, I, I don't know why I think on the Instagram feed, your feed is like the number one that thing that comes up. So I've watched like all your videos, uh, seen all the stuff. It's it's amazing. Oh, I gotta get I gotta get on that. And, and, and you're, Koji, Co- Co- I swore you went to I thought I swore you from Sacramento with the Christian brother. No, no, no. I'm from Okay, Alabama. oh yeah, no, no problem. But <laughs> we, it's, that, it's, that, it's that other Asian dude. <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> no, not like that. I, sw- I swore you went to Christian brothers and we were friends with Cal. We all do the same people, but hey, it doesn't matter. Hey, yeah, no, but yeah, but I feel like, I feel like I've been following you forever and I love the work. So why don't, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> Dinesh is like, what am I doing here? This is the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good. It's all good. No, so I'm, I'm Dinesh Demir. Um, let's see here. Born and raised Sacramento, California. Um, went to the University of Georgia, played football, ran track there. You know, went to, got into corporate America. Left corporate America to really pursue my passion. That's uh, connecting the diaspora back with Africa uh, through art, commerce, and culture. So you know, oh. the sum of, that's what I'm doing right now. So I um, I appreciate you. Thank you for having me on. You know, anytime, Sacramento or no Sacramento, <laughs> brother. And and Mark, and I should awesome mention today. that Martin is from Africa. So I, that's one of one of the reasons that when I when I saw your Martin, post, I thought Martin? I'm from Zambia. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. I haven't been to Zambia. Yeah, I've been to South Africa, but I haven't been to Zambia. Sure, I've been to South I, Africa and Namibia, but I haven't been Okay. To I have a lot of family in South Africa that live there, too. They live in okay. Joburg, Pretoria, uh, Durban. Mm-hmm. Um, real quickly, where did you go to high school in Sacramento? Christian Brothers. Christian Brothers, okay. So I, I actually work with, I work with a guy, um, you know Mike, right, Koji? From Sacramento, yeah. he ran track in Oregon. But he, he went to, what's the big football school there in Sacramento? Oh, I mean, it depends when he was there because it, it changes. Like, yeah, I mean, he says they're, they're always a top, they're always a top school. Uh, how old is it? Let me ask you, let me Mike's, ask you how. Yeah, Mike is maybe early 30s. Mm, so at that time, it could have been, is he, let me, okay, here he goes. Here's another question because Sacramento's kind of is very, uh, what's the word? Uh, not, what's the word I want to use? Segregated kind. So yeah. is he a white guy or a black guy? No, I mean, like, he's not, that's a good, he's kind of in between. He's, he's, Mike, what is Mike's last name? He's he's uh, he's he's Mexican, he but he, he talks like a brother. I mean, he's he's totally he's totally indoctrinated. I mean, you know. Yes, I, yeah. See that that I don't. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah, but he I mean, ran he ran the four hundred. And how old are you, Dennis? I'm thirty eight. Okay, I don't I don't think Mike's quite that old. I think he's about thirty one, maybe. But he okay. ran he ran track with football at some big school. But then he ran track at Oregon. Okay. So he was uh. Okay. Oh anyway. Well, I love I love you know one of the things I've been following when I've been following you and seeing all your trips back to Africa or to Africa. Sorry. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in kind of going in, in that whole adventure and, and what that meant for you? Yeah. So in 2011, uh, when I was in corporate America, I was doing very well. So uh, a friend of mine said, "Diana, you should take a vacation." I said, "Okay, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll take one." So I was going to go to Brazil. You know, I was going to go to Brazil. You know, I had buddies that went to Brazil in the past. You never you know, come they, back. They told me, yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, told me the story. <laughs> so they told me the stories how they'll get the villas and you know get a couple girls as well, and the girls will <laughs> pretty much do everything they ask them to do. So I said, yeah, Ooh. I want to, I want to, I want to do that. I want to do that. Boy, so I was, back. I was, I was headed to Brazil. On my, I was, that was the plan. Then the person I was gonna go with, she backed out, and so I'm like, damn, I don't want to go to Brazil by myself. So another friend of mine said, Diana, you should go to Tanzania. I said, Tanzania? He said, yeah, East Africa, you should go. And I said, uh-huh. So I started researching it. 
So the reason why the, like Wick sealed the deal for Tanzania was there's a uh, there's a island off of the coast of Tanzania called Zanzibar. Yep. And in LA at the time in Santa Monica there was a club called Zanzibar, and I didn't know it was a real place, like an actual real island, a real place. I said, okay, that's confirmation. So I went and I just loved it. I'm like, look, this Africa is going to be, a, you know, when I get my two weeks vacation, I'm, I'm going to Africa, you know? So then it went from there to like, look, I really want to focus on Africa as far as building bridges, businesses, um, focusing on the culture, you know, and really learning more about myself as far as, you know, where I come from. Cause you know, our brother Martin knows he's Zambian, you know, were you, were you born there too? Martin? Born and raised. Still yeah, have, yeah. So still have family there, right? So as far as for the diaspora, since because of the slave trade, a lot of us were disconnected from that. So a lot of it became a uh, personal journey as far as discovering my roots, which I I, I have, and then also where are you from? Uh, so I'm Nigerian and Sierra Leone. You look Nigerian to me, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's cool. So so it is also too taking others who want to have that similar journey or experience, you know, bringing them all for the for the experience as well. And how important, I mean, how important for your, I mean, because of all the, the shit that happened with slavery and all that craziness, how, how important is it to you and, and your community to be able to discover, discover what it means to, you know, to return to, to where, you, where originally you guys were taken from? Uh, it, it means a lot because, you know, again, that's just like a chapter. It's kind of like, you know, you don't know who your father is. And so, you know, you're searching for your dad, right? And then one day somebody says, oh, so-and-so, you know, is your father. He's like, oh, you know, then you, you know, they, they kind of, that, that feeling of finally knowing who your other parent was. So it's the That's same thing with, uh, with, with Africa, because, you know, we were taught here in America that basically, you know, black history started when we showed up here um yeah well i mean that's what we're taught we're taught like our 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 existence yeah. started when we showed up here on a slave ship yeah and then you start to research you're like well hold on what about what were we doing in africa and that part is omitted so then you go on this journey and it just it just opens up a pandora's box because you wanted to learn more okay yeah. where am i from what tribe you yeah. know so you know i just i i, I was blessed to to find out you know how many, but how many no, go, go ahead. ahead. Keep going. I was just going to ask yeah, you, how many times do you go back? Oh, I, I, so I go back like five, six times a year. But because of coronavirus, um, you know, I was there in January. I was supposed to be there in March. That got canceled. I was supposed to be back again in May. That got canceled. So, you know, now I'm supposed to go in August, but I'm just going to push that back to September probably. Wow. So, yeah, I'm usually there like wow. five, six times a year. A, you know, a good friend of mine, um, I'm an actor, but a good friend of mine who's an actor as well, um, is in Morocco, Omari. He okay, goes I've been in Morocco. To, pardon? I've been in Morocco. Oh, uh, no, his name is Morocco. Oh, oh. Mor 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 Morocco Omari. He was on, um, he was on uh, Empire. He played um, Lucius's uh, half-brother, the FBI agent. Did you ever watch that show? I, I don't watch TV. Anyway, he went to yeah. he went to uh, Africa for the first time a few years back, and now he's he goes there all the time. He's probably going to move there. And uh, yeah. watching his journey from the first time he went there, he's, he was always fascinated with Africa, and he always, he collected masks, African masks, I think. Yeah, and um, I got I got a whole art. No, my I see mind. that, I'm, and I'm and I'm going to ask you about those real soon yeah. because yeah. I need those for my son. Mm -hmm. He's kind of shiftless, so you know. But um, he, watching his journey um, going back to Africa has really been interesting because he's really fallen in love with Africa. And I've always told people that once you go to Africa, it's not what you think. Right. You know, Zanzibar. How how amazing are the beaches in Zanzibar? Oh my God! Now I'm the saying, water. if people, if you haven't been to Freetown, Sierra Leone, that's probably the most beautiful. I've seen, but Zanzibar, oh man, it's just, and again, it's, it's, it's done on purpose because there's been this lie that's been put out there that Africa is, uh, is just undeveloped and poverty and, yeah, you know, little kids running around with barefooted with AK-47s. And, <laughs> you know, that's the, well, I mean, seriously, that's the image they want to put out. Yeah. So, you know, but when you go, it's like, okay, these folks have been lying all this time. Yeah. And then you go over there and you see white folks over there a lot. You see everybody else enjoying it, but then they tell us that we go, we're going to catch AIDS, 
malaria, you know, we'll get kidnapped. Little kid with AK-47 is going to chase you out the bushes. And it's like, they've been lying the whole time. I've been dealing with that my whole life since I moved here. Uh-huh. You know, it's the, the questions that come out of people's mouths are unbelievable. Right. But, you know, my... Tiger's lion's going to... Uh, lion's going to eat you. And, yeah, yeah, like, it, it's just... People, oh, lion, you, go, you go into the bush, lions will get you. <laughs> ain't gonna lie about that. But, 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 but the thing is, the problem is, we're using, we have this thing called a cell phone where I can access the planet off this phone, off this device. And so it's really now, in the year 2020, there's no reason to have an excuse to use, I say, 1980s and 1970s stereotypes to not go to Africa in 2020. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I think it's well, longer than I think it's longer than that. I mean, it's it's. I mean, it, outside of like Europe, you know, it seems like they a lot of people, uh, a lot of the Caucasian folks in this country feel like every everywhere else is undeveloped and that nothing right. good has ever come from anywhere outside of you know Europe. Where right. you know, it, it, I mean, Africa was a cradle of our civilization. Things were happening in every in Africa. Things were happening in Asia. Things are happening mm -hmm. all over the world outside of. Europe at the same or at the same time as Europe but it feels like if you look at history it looks like or you look at the way we study history it looks like Europe is the only one people that came up with anything important yeah it, it drives me crazy you know my brother's like you know I, even my brother who moved back in 2009 was saying that uh you know I said how are things over there now he's like Martin he goes you're not going to recognize it you know we're talking about the economy and he's like are you kidding me he goes I see Lamborghinis and Porsches all day long in, in Zambia in, in Lusaka the capital mm -hmm. he, he goes it's, it's crazy people don't get it you know? Go to Legos. You see the same thing in Legos. Yeah, exactly. And you know, and and you know who loves that? You know, China, 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 China got it. Mm -hmm. They are well, deep in Africa. But China's also taking advantage of a lot of the situation down there as well. Absolutely, so. absolutely. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, shit. but you know the, the crazy thing about there, there is so much integration between the Chinese and the Zambians. Yeah. I mean, you'll see you'll 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 see Chinese folks in Zambia now speaking my language with my accent it is right. trippy yeah it's trippy well so with all this kind of knowledge and kind of you know this background of coming back and forth uh how does that affect the way you look at what's going on now in the world with all the or specifically in our country with you know with all the craziness and the yeah and the black lives matter and george floyd and all that stuff well i mean it's just but this thing we've been here 400 years now right and if you look at the data, our, as a black people, our condition is getting worse, right? And so I'm trying to tell people, look, we have options, but they still don't want to hear that. You know, a lot of our people are just, for some reason, emotionally attached to America. And I just don't, I don't, I don't get it. Because, I mean, a lot of the problems we talk about, you know, gentrification, we're being priced out of real estate. I'm like, look, you could take your money, start shifting your resources over to Africa and at least give your future, your legacy, your future generations the opportunity to have options. But if you just look at the data and the numbers, you know, our, our, it's just, it, it, when it comes to home ownership, you know, prison population, uh, lack, of, lack to, of access to a quality education. We've been redlined out of communities, you know, just everything. It's like, look, I mean, we have options, but some people listen, but the vast majority are like, look, we're going to, you know, we're not, we're, we're going to stay here and tough it and, and fight back. I'm like, fight back how? All right, vote for Joe Biden. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, and this is, I don't want to get political, but it's just like the solutions, I mean, the issues that have been plaguing in a black community have been going on before Trump and will continue after Trump. And thinking that you're going to remove Trump and that's going to solve everything, you're <laughs> kidding yourself. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, it's just, it's just, it's, it's delusional. So my thing is like, look, okay. So George Floyd, you know, was murdered at the hands of police, right? So the question is, who funds the Minnesota Police Department? Who funds their salary? Right. So you know, we talk about. You know, black people here in America, we have, what, a $60 trillion spending power, allegedly. Obviously, that's being taxed. So your taxes are going towards paying the police that hurt you ass. in the streets. But then what I'm saying is, like, look, slowly pull your resources out because your resources aren't, are being used to cause your suffering. I look like I'm crazy. 
you know, and then some people think by switching, you know, bringing in a new, a, a, a new president, now that's going to change. I'm like, look, people, black people have been getting killed by the police even before Trump. Then, you know, Obama says, let's put body cameras on them. We put body cameras on them. They malfunction all of a sudden, or it still doesn't matter. They get, you know, you have a situation with, um, well, Austin Sterling, but what's the, uh, the brother in New York where I can't, Eric Garner. Mm -hmm. He gets choked out on camera. Yep. So now, now what we're seeing is black lives being just murdered by police on camera. Yep. As far as the response to George Floyd, I mean, like I said, we won't truly know until um, sentencing comes. Because, I mean, you had the situation where in Dallas, Texas, police officer goes to the wrong house, wrong apartment, on the wrong floor, kicks in the door, kills. I mean, just imagine you're sitting there at your house right now. Somebody, police officer, thinks that's her house. Off kicks duty, in the door. Too. Huh? Off duty as well. Off duty as well. Kicks in the door, blows you away. She only gets, what, like seven or eight years. And then on top of that, the judge gives her a hug and a smile yeah. at their sentencing. That's I just... mean, this is what we're dealing with. It's just, again, now if you want to continue to pour your resources and your energy into this system, then tell me how much, like, just articulate how much sense that makes. And then you complain about it. Danas, you made a lifelong fan, bro. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> that is a really, that's a really good point. You're, yeah. basically, you're basically funding your own death. Is what you're saying? Yeah, that's, that's what you're doing. Like, it's we, crazy. We, Funding we, your own oppression. You know? your, own, your own suffering. Yeah. So, you, you, I mean, black people in the 60s, we integrated. That's what we wanted. We wanted to integrate. So we integrate our money, our minds, our sweat equity, and then we get nothing in return for the most part. Yeah. 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 You know, people, people have been building wealth in this country for years. While, while we're fighting for equality, they're building their wealth. Right. We're fighting for civil rights. You know, they're, 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 they're building their wealth. They're putting their kids through good schools while we're, trying to, while we're fighting for, you know, equal education, you know. To, de to desegregate, they're still building their wealth, getting their education, and slowly, you know, keeping people out. Once we get our education, what do they do? They put laws in place where you can't buy redlining. You can't buy houses right. in New York City, you know, after World War II. So yeah. when we're fighting for equal housing rights, people are buying up houses and just and cornering the market, giving those houses to their kids and, and so on. Yeah. So I, I agree. Well, here's, a, here's another I one. Agree. I mean, so you get your education. All right. Say I'm a PhD. I'm a doctor. You're a lawyer. We have our black community filled with doctors and lawyers, right? We're all making six figures plus. We are. We all clean our, manicure our lawns properly. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm seriously, manicure our lawns properly. We have the ideal neighborhood that we're supposed to have. But for some odd reason, our property values are val devalued still versus our white counterparts on the same side of town. Yeah, yeah. And no one, no one can explain that. Well, you know what's really interesting is that one of my friends is doing a dissertation on white flight from Asian neighborhoods. So when Asians move in and people and white people move out, it's really interesting because with, uh, with, people, with other people of color, they'll always say, oh, it's not safe. Um, I don't feel safe in my community anymore. Schools are dangerous. Or what, but when Asians move in, They'll say, oh, the homework, there's too much homework. The school is too tough. And then they leave. But the interesting thing about Asians is that when the Asians move in, actually the neighborhood gets more expensive because the schools get better. Because right. now all of a sudden, it, so it's, it's, but it's really interesting because the code words, they're just different code words, but they mean the same thing. Like we just don't want to live with the, those other people, you know? But, right. but I always find it ironic that, that it's like, you know, that when, that when white people leave from Asian neighborhoods, that it, becomes, it becomes more expensive. That's only because, you know, we're obsessed with the homework and everything. But one thing, one thing I want, do want to mention is uh, um, I think it would be awesome. I mean, have you ever considered starting like a children's program or a young adult program where, where you take um, folks who are a young African-Americans from, you know, from the United States and take them to Africa? Oh, absolutely. So uh, with Search for Who, we do what we call cultural uh, like tours. We do, I do tours. I, I, I did two last year. We're supposed to do two this year, but COVID pretty much. You know, as far as tours to Africa, 2020, might as well just write that off. So how one plan cultural experiences to, uh, to Nigeria and Sierra Leone. And then I'm going to expand that. So, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's, um, that, that's definitely, we've been doing that now as far as targeting specifically, you know, maybe high school students um, haven't really narrowed it down 
yeah, uh, like that yet, but would, would, would love to. But speaking of the Asian uh, neighborhood thing, so I think I read this story it was in San Francisco, right? Another area where Asians were kind of pushed out, but then they came back and bought up everything. <laughs> yeah. Like this guy, I think he, a white guy, I think, bought a, bought a house. But I think like, or in, in fact, I take that back. In this, I think, subdivision, like this Asian guy owns, so people own their homes, but I think the Asian guy owns like the rights to the road or something or sidewalks or something crazy. So he charges everyone a certain fee to access their house in like this subdivision. <laughs> it's something crazy. And so I know people wow. were upset about that. Yeah, I read, it was a couple of years ago, last year I read that article on that. It's, yeah, it was just, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yes, I have a question for you. Uh, what parts of Africa are you focusing on now? Is there, on visiting, do you visit, do you visit the same area or are you trying to get all, all over? The, all over? I mean, I, I would love to touch all 54 countries, but right now I'm primarily West Africa and to narrow okay. it down, it's going to be Nigeria, Sierra Leone, okay. and a little bit of Liber in Liberia. Those, okay. those, those three countries are like my main. Stay out of, stay out of Mauritania. Well, you know, I'm, I, actually I want to visit because I've been to Senegal, but I haven't been to Mauritania, but I've been to Senegal. But actually I had a layover in Mauritania. It was a short layover going to Senegal. You've heard the stories about Mauritania, right? Well, yeah, yeah, with slave yeah. trade and everything, yeah, yeah. But there, even now, man, it's, oh, man, there's, there was a great Netflix documentary that actually touched on it, you know, Mauritania. Really? Oh, yeah. What's Mor the name of it? I'm going to watch it. I'll watch uh, it. It's, it's, the one about, it's the one about immigrate, Im about ice and immigration. Uh, if I can remember it, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. Okay, um, yeah. I'll but it that. was, they talked to a guy who, uh, 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 black, black gentleman from Mauritania who's here. And didn't want to go back because in Mauritania, they still have slavery. If you yeah. have dark, if you have dark skin, you can be enslaved, and they deny it, but it is there. And this guy was, and this guy's case showcased it, mm -hmm. and it was pretty amazing. But anyway, that being said, Coach, I think it's about yeah. that time. I think it is. Sorry, this is such a great conversation. It really is. But, it really is. But this is the point of the show where we ask our guests about their best or worst moments. So Martin, I'll get let you pick, so you can pick right uh, if you want to hear his best or worst moment. Ah, oh, jeez. You know, Dana let's, let's go with Dana's best. There's enough drama already going on right okay. now. Okay. So what's your I, best I'd like moment? To, I'd like to hear your best moment. Oh, man. In and, it can't, and, his, and real quickly, um, if, if you got kids, it's obviously going to be your kids. If you're married, it's obviously going to be getting married. But um, those things are kind of easy. But we, I, I, I like to hear best moments where it's like it's just like groundbreaking for you, something that you can instantly access again, you know? I would say, okay, let's see here. What if I have like two? That's fine. That's fine. Or just one. That's fine. Okay. I would say like my best moments, like that, like my life when I was being recruited in football, I was like one of the top recruits in the nation. So just being recruited in football and going on all these official visits, like that was memorable and the fun I had. And then um, when I got my Nigerian citizenship and was uh, coronated as a prince. What? Uh, those, are my two, those are my two favorite moments. Okay. Like those are my two, like, like as far as memories, and of course my son, but you know, as far as like this life memories, like experiences, like being recruited and just going on official visits and being flown out on private yeah. jets and stuff like that. And, and then my coronation and getting my citizenship in Nigeria. You play football at Georgia? Yeah. University of Georgia. Bulldogs. Mm -hmm. Wow. So tell, so tell us about that experience. Like, you know, getting to Georgia. What did you play? Uh, I played running back in DB. I blew my knee out, you know, so, you know, I ran, I ran track as well at uh -huh. UGA. Uh, I mean, it was, it was, it was a, it was a great experience, man. It was a great experience. But I think being recruited was by far. That's got to be amazing. Oh yeah, it was, it was amazing. Did, did Alabama come after you too? <laughs> well, this is back when Alabama sucked, so it really didn't. When has Alabama sucked? Alabama sucked like '99 to to like until. Um, Saving came Saving in like oh five. Yeah. Alabama. Oh, that's that's stuck. that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah they were down. Well, like I went. I went to, I yeah, went to Kentucky. Down. So you know, I went to Kentucky. So a good season that. When, when, when were you? At, when were you at to Kentucky? What years? Oh, uh, I'm I'm old, bro. I'm old. <laughs> but what what year? What year? Eighty eighty nine and ninety two. Yeah, you still look young though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Until you see me get up and start walking, you be like, oh, okay. That's oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well, I want to hear how how did you become a prince? How did that come about? 
No, so it was discovered that I have uh, my family, I have roots, and it's called Odoruo. Odoruo is the name of the kingdom in sure. Nigeria, no Shun State. And Are you so. <laughs> so That's it was cool. it was discovered that you know we I have ancestry from there so they're like you know your family was taken away as royalty so you're back now so wow you know your family must have been a part of the whole um there was uh i might so my father's an ethnic musicologist and um he went to ucla and especially is you know african music and he did um you ever heard of festac it was a huge festival hold on you know what ah man if you listen God, give me 40 seconds. I'm going to go grab something for you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, that. Dude, we had, this guy's awesome, man. I knew, I knew this conversation was going to be awesome because oh I don't know what it is. I'm, he's on my, he's like, like the algorithm for Instagram. Yeah. Like always on the top. So like I, I've watched all his videos. I mean, even like my best friends, I don't see their posts, but like, I don't even see your posts, but I see his posts all the time. So I'm always watching all his videos and it looks so amazing. I mean, they're going, going to Africa is so amazing. And I could just imagine yeah. what it means. I, you know, I got to start following him, dude. Yeah. Dude, out of world, man. I know that that kingdom. My dad is one of the organizers of Festac 77. Oh, wow. I don't know what that he means, was, but... it, it was a, it was a, it was a festival of music and culture in Africa. And they were supposed to have more of them, but there was just only one, I think. So my dad but, used to go back to Africa, right? All the time. So this oh, is a wow. Ebony magazine showcasing Festac from 1977. So my father was one of the main main producers of Festac. Really? Organizers of it, yeah. Okay, let me go ahead. Let me run open it so up. Cool. So I was looking for my yellow fever card. My mom has sent it back to me and I just so I got it. So So this is, hold on, let me put my, um, my We can still hear you, surprisingly enough. Yeah. So my dad used to go to Liberia a lot. And I think he got this. They sell Ebony Magazine in Liberia. Yeah. So this Ebony Magazine, Festac 1977. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That so is so cool. My mom had sent this to me, so... Yeah, Festec was quite a it was quite quite an event. Quite an yeah, event. Yeah, this is October nineteen. Well, this is May, May nineteen seventy seven. Yep. Yeah. So, um, as as Prince, do you get any kind of benefits as a Prince other than putting it on your name? Do you get treated uh, differently, I mean, or? Uh, I mean, it, you know, I I tell people in, in order to rule, you have to serve. So I'm doing way more serving than than anything. Yeah. But I mean, it's you get some perks, but That's you know. Cool. Royal blood, look at you, man. You know, but you it's just, you know, like I said, you have to you have to serve. So my thing is all about service versus you know trying to. Some people they'll get a title and they'll try to exploit all the benefits and stuff. Yeah. But you know, and, I'm just I'm about and, service, man. And why did you decide to become a Nigerian citizen? Well, I'm, I, I well I'm He's a Nigerian, I'm, dude. Yeah. So yeah, so, so you just decided like because you're an American citizen before, right? Or no, you can have dual. You can have oh, dual citizenship. Oh, you can have dual citizenship. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Got it. Uh, that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Of course, you yeah, should yeah. know that. You no, I mean, I, there's some there's some countries that don't allow dual citizenship. Yeah, oh, yeah. For, for, yeah, doesn't. Yeah. yeah, for for example, I think Tanzania doesn't. Um, yeah. Cote d'Ivoire, they don't. Uh, yeah. So you're right. There are a couple, couple, but Nigeria and USA, you can have. Yeah, right. Zambia too. Zambia can have dual citizenship. Right. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Most countries, I'll tell you, most African countries, if you're an American citizen, want to become a citizen of their country, they're pretty open to that. They don't, they don't have a problem with someone being an American citizen and a citizen of whatever country in Africa you want to be from. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, that, that's, yeah, and that's typically an economic thing too. Right. So I have Zambian and American citizenship. I got my citizenship you know, last year. It's, it's hilarious because I was looking for my yellow fever card and I'm like, where has it been? But I guess I left it in Sacramento and my mom shipped it. And it's been sitting in with this for months now. So, <laughs> I'm glad, yeah, I'm I glad you found it. Yeah, yeah, I found it. Yeah. Brought it up. Well, so so you so I know you also write. You've also written books, and they're come out. So why don't you right. tell us a little bit about your books and where people? Can yeah. Get so I've written um, several books, children's books, and I've written a sales book, and I'm writing on another. Uh, I'm working on another title as well, uh, which I should probably release maybe uh, early September, maybe mid September. Uh, so I'm working on that. Then documentary as well. Uh, working on that, so that's probably be released end of the year. So I'm working, working on that. I'm working on a lot of stuff. It just I, I'm using this time right now to really be focused and creative and put everything uh, out there. 
Yeah. You sound busy, brother. You well, tell us. Busy. I mean, tell us what are the what are your books about, and where can people get them? Yeah, I, yeah, want, so, I, want, uh, I want all of those books for my son. Just so you know. Okay. Yeah. So if you go to dynastymirror.com, go to dynastymirror.com. You can order uh, the books from there. Just click on a link. It'll take you to like the Amazon site where you could order all the books. But basically, it's um. You know, I mean, just growing up, you know, for some of us black here in America, you know, we might, we, some of us have had self-esteem issues, whether it comes from a, I mean, you understand we're the only people who have a certain hair texture and skin color. And, you know, because of the media, you know, that's been really, you know, the prop, propagated, that's a, a bad thing as far as ugliness. Because, you know, here in America, the standard of beauty is white, blonde, blue, blue blonde hair, blue eyes. Mm -hmm. And then the standard of ugliness has been black skin, nappy hair. I mean, so basically, as far as with the books, I mean, that's to change that narrative and for black children to be comfortable and be proud of who they are, you know, as far as the yeah. identity. And then to let them know that, look, peep some of the most influential, most powerful people who ever walked the face of this earth look just like you. And that's part of the reason why they start history for us you know, when we arrived here on slave ships. So, cool. yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to buy your books and I'll, I'll donate it to my, uh, I'll have my kid read it first and then we'll donate it to the uh, school library because our school library is terrible. They have <laughs> I mean, like, well, terrible in that they just don't, you know, there's no diversity. There's nothing that, uh, all right. there's, it's all the same stories of, of, you know, the same people in the same situations and it's all, yeah. it's all not, it's not good stuff that people should be reading about. Yeah. You know, learning I'm, about I'm, I'm, other people. Yeah, I'm gonna get those books. I'll do the same thing after I Grayson gets done with them. I'll do them. Ah, said his I name. Again. <laughs> Sorry, that's a thing. We we're not supposed to say our kids' names, but we always mention our kids' names. But why don't you tell us about your? Um, like you also have a company where you where you, I know you can't take people on tours now, but right. where can people find out about that? Everything's on dynastymirror.com. Okay, so they go to dynastymirror. First name, last name, dynastymirror.com. You know, everything is uh, everything is there. But yeah, so basically, during uh, offering cultural experiences. Uh, throughout west africa so right now the focus is um so me myself i will be personally going with people to sierra leone and nigeria but then also outside of that because i can't be everywhere at one time um uh, benin republic uh cote d'ivoire ivory coast senegal and uh, thinking about a adding uh togo as well so wow man you're really hitting that west coast <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a West African guy, man. I mean, I've been to East Africa, but I'm just, I'm a, I'm a West African cat, man. I love West Africa. So, <laughs> What's you know, I, I've been, I've been meaning, I've been meaning to get back to Namibia, but it's just sometimes just, it just always doesn't work out. So, but I'm a West African cat, man. I just, that's, 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 that's home, West Africa, man. Uh, everyone loves the West, West Africa. It's, it's mm -hmm. you know, it's funny. My, my buddy Morocco, same thing. He's pretty much stuck on that side too. Yeah, and he's in Ghana. He's he goes to I think I think Ghana and uh, he loves Rwanda. Okay. Like, we got to get him on the show too, but he loves Rwanda. But yeah, those are some great places. There's some there's some amazing beaches out there too. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, like I said, Free Town, Sierra Leone by far. Now I haven't been to Seychelles yet, but Free Man Seychelles. <sighs> Have you been Seychelles, Mauritius? Ooh, yeah. I heard about Mauritius, yeah, but Mauritius is because I, I love to fish. I love to fly fish, and so. Mm -hmm. That's like my dream is to go back there and, and fish those areas, the Zanzibar. But anyway, that being said, um, kinky hair, kinky hair is kingly hair. Can you tell us a little bit about that book? It looks like a great book. Yeah. So I mean, it's true. I mean, let's 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 take a let's take a look at it. So basically, I mean, Mass is being criticized about his hair. Mm -hmm. So his parents had to remind him, like, look, be comfortable who you are, be proud of who you are, you know, be proud of your unique features, and you know, it gives a list of basically. Af black people, Africans who changed the course of history, who have hair just like him. Cool. Now, is it one character that do your books involve uh, one character that do they follow the life of one ooh. character? Right, right, right. So uh, in my books is Massa, uh, or in other books is his sister Amina, and, and uh -huh. then in one of the books they're both together. So wow. how many books do you have? Uh, children's books. This right now released in physical format. I'm on number four. The fifth one is being well. The fifth ones are, they're all available on, on uh, for uh, Kindle Kindle format. But as far as physical, right now it's four. Wow, cool. awesome. I, I, like, I like I like the physical books. I'm That's awesome. Physical. That's yeah, that really is. That really really is. Well, I'll definitely put I'll, I'll put a link on our show notes so everybody who's listening could just click on that link if yeah. if you didn't get it, and that way you could go and check out the site and get some books as well. But 
thank you so much for coming on. Um, we really appreciate this has been an awesome no talk. I think we could have done like a five hour conversation, but I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to waste your time. On, on, <laughs> no, you know. no problem. No problem. Um, Martin, thank you so much for listening, for being oh, here. Of course. As well. oh, same, and, same to you, Koji. And thank you for everybody for listening. We really appreciate this. Please check out the site. Please buy books. I mean, this is, this is the kind of stuff that you guys should be listening and reading, yeah. um, reading about, because I think it is important, even if, even if you're not African-American, I think it is important to kind of get different perspectives mm -hmm. and to really, to really understand different people. You know, one thing I'm going to say real quick is I had, I was on another podcast earlier today, um, a different podcast from, from anything I do. And the person was freak was, was really confused because I told him that when I read books as a kid, I never imagined that character to be me. And he couldn't mm -hmm. believe it. He just assumed that everybody imagined the characters to be them. And I said, I'm Asian. And when right. I read a book, I would never assume, I mean, unless their name was like Koji, right? right. I would never assume that they look like me. And it just blew his mind. And it was like the most, like, and I, I was trying to explain to him that most people of color, when they read a book, unless it's like specifically about their people, they're not imagining right. it. And, and for a lot of people that just blows their mind. And I think this is one of the reasons people don't go to Africa is because yeah. they're not used to like being in a place where they're not the, the main people, the most important people. It's the same thing in Asia. They go to China or they go to Japan and they're like, they free, a lot of people freak out because they say, oh, there's too many Asians. Where are the white people? Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> Yeah, you get that, in Zen, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's a whole other topic. Yeah, that's, that's another topic. topic. But anyway, thank yeah. you guys. Thank you for listening. Please rate, review, subscribe to our podcast. Please come to our brand new website, Best Your yes, Work yes, Pod. Yes. It has all our videos, has all our uh, all our audio. It has some information about us and some of the other things from the network, Little Nalu Network. So please visit us. Thank you guys, everybody. Thank you. Peace out. Thank you. Thank you. Peace thank out. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.